Hi, I'm Anna, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel, where we explore folklore, mythology, myths, legends and fairy tales every week. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Today we're going to look into the legends and stories behind the three legendary items owned by the Norse god Thor, often anglicised as Thor. These three items are his hammer, his iron gloves or gauntlets, and his belt. Let's get started. Thor is perhaps one of the best known Norse gods, especially now because of the Marvel version of Thor, which isn't entirely accurate to Norse mythology. Thor, or Thor, is often considered the god of storms, lightning, strength and protection. He is most often described as a mighty warrior, with red hair and a beard, and he is married to the beautiful golden-haired goddess named Sif. However, he is also known to have a Jotun mistress, known as Jonsaxa. With his wife, he has a daughter called Thrutr, and with his mistress, he has a son called Magni. He is also known to have another son by the name of Malti, although it's unclear who his mother is. It was said that Thor would die during Ragnarok, and afterwards both of his sons would take up his mighty hammer and wield it against their enemies. Thor's hammer goes by the name of Mjölnir. The meaning of the name, however, is a source of much disagreement. The Old Norse word Mjöl, meaning new snow, was thought to refer to the whiteness or brightness of lightning and the shine that the hammer emitted. Some say that the name may have been influenced by the Russian word Molnir, meaning lightning. Others suggest that the name is linked with the Old Norse word Mala, meaning to grind. Hence, Mjölnir would mean the grinder, or that which grinds. However, the word Mjöl means flower in a number of parts of Scandinavia, and it's used to describe the milling or the crushing of the grains to actually create the flower. With this kind of connection, it's not hard to think that Mjölnir may actually mean something along the lines of the Crusher, as the trolls and Jötuns and other monsters of Norse mythology are all too well acquainted with. The origin myth of Mjölnir is written in the Skaldskapamon by Snorri Sturluson. It was said that one day the goddess Sif, Thor's wife, was sleeping peacefully when Loke snuck up behind her and cut off her beautiful long golden hair. When Sif awoke, she was distraught and Thor was so enraged that he grabbed Loki and threatened to crush all the bones in his body unless he found a way to set right his trickery. As such, Loki then travelled to the dwarves or dark elves in Svartolfheimer. There, the three dwarves, known as the sons of Evaldi, created three special items. Hair of gold for Sif, Skidbladnir, the fastest ship, and Odin's spear, Gungnir. After seeing such fine craftsmanship, Loke goes to another dwarf, or dark elf, by the name of Brokkr, and he bets to him that he and his brother, Eitri, sometimes called Sindri, wouldn't be able to make three items of such fine quality. Unable to resist the challenge, the two brothers agree to create three items of equal quality. However, as the brothers work, they're pestered by a fly that bites Brokkr three times on the hand. He ignores it, and he pulls the great boar Gullinbrushti from the forge. And then, a second time, the fly bites him on his neck, 
and he ignores it, pulling this time from the forge the magical golden ring called Dropnir. Finally, the fly hovers around him and lands on him again, biting him on the eye. And this time, the dwarf pulls the great hammer Mjölnir from the flames. However, the handle is shorter than he would have liked, due to Loki's deception and meddling. The fly was, of course, Loki, who had shapeshifted into the form of the annoying insect, trying to win the bet. The gods then all convene to judge the quality of the item. And when it comes to Mjölnir, Brokkir and his brother gift it to Thod. He tells them that the hammer can strike with as much force as the wielder desires, and it would never fail, always hitting its target. Likewise, if it was thrown, it would always return to the wielder's hand. Another interesting thing to note is that the hammer is described as being big enough for Thod to store in his shirt. So it's not the great mighty hammer that many people may depict it as, but more of a handheld hammer or throwing hammer. An old poem known as Thrymskvita tells the tale of how Thor got his hammer stolen by the Jotun king. It starts with Thor waking up to find that his hammer is missing. At first, he travels to Loke, thinking that it must be some trickery of his. However, Loke swears that he hasn't seen the hammer, and so the two of them travel to Freya. However, she hasn't seen it either, but she does lend to Loke her cloak of falcon feathers, and with it he flies around all the worlds searching for the hammer. When he comes to Jotunheimr, he sees Hrimmer sitting on a burial mound, the king of the Jotuns, and he speaks with him. The king says that he has the hammer and that he's hidden it in a place that no one will ever find it. And he has a condition of its return. He says that he will not return the hammer to Thor until he's given the goddess Freya to marry as his wife. Well, Loki goes back to Thor and tells him what he's learned, and then the two of them go to Freya. When they meet her, they tell her to adorn a bridal dress and a veil so that they can take her to Jotunheimr. However, Freya is not happy with this at all. It's said that she was so angry with them that all the halls of Aushkotter shook when she yelled at them. So, all the gods convene, and they try to come up with an idea of how to get the hammer back without giving up the goddess Freya. Heimdallr decides that a good idea would be for Thor to dress up as Freya dressing up in a wedding dress and a veil so that no one can see his face. And he should go to Jotunheimr and try to get his hammer back. Well, you can imagine that Thor was not happy about this at all. But after much pressure from the other gods, he and Loki travel to Jotunheimr. He dressed as Freya in bridal clothing and a veil and Loke dressed as a bridesmaid. They both arrive at Jotunheimr, and they're received well by the Jotun king. He lays out a lovely feast for them all, a wedding celebration. However, as they sit down to feast, the Jotun king is very surprised to see what he thinks is the beautiful goddess Freya drinking caskets upon caskets of mead, and eating animals whole, leaving only the bones on his plate, or her plate. Loke, thinking quickly, tells the king that Freya is simply tired and hungry, for they've been traveling such a long time to get to Jotunheimr. The king accepts this, although he still seems quite puzzled. 
The festivities continue for some time, but after a little while, the Jotun king's sister comes out holding the great hammer Mjölnir. She says that the goddess Freya and her brother, the Jotun king, should hold their hands over the hammer to seal their marriage. Upon seeing his hammer in reach, Thor said to reach over and grab it, and he's thought to have beat every single Jotun in combat. And it's even said that he killed the Jotun king's sister. Mjölnir is an important symbol and it's been found in many archaeological sites, typically in the form of jewellery, primarily necklace pendants. The hammer is a symbol of strength and protection, as Thor was said to be the protector of mankind, slaying the evil Jötuns and other monsters and keeping humanity safe. In Humskvidda, or the Lay of Humid, from the Poetic Edda, Thor's use of Mjölnir to kill Jötuns and other monsters is described. As he takes a great cauldron off his back, he turns to face his enemy. In this excerpt, the Jötuns are referred to as the Whales of the Waste. He stood and cast from his back the kettle, and Mjölnir, the lover of murder, he wielded. So all the whales of the waste he slew. Now everyone knows of Mjölnir, Thor's mighty hammer that he uses to slay giants or Jötuns and other trolls and monsters. However, fewer people know of his iron gauntlets and his belt. Jolngreip is the name given to Thor's Iron Gauntlets, which literally translates to the Iron Grippers. It's said that without these, he's unable to grip onto Mjölnir. And when he throws it, it needs to return to the gauntlets, not just to his hand. They're sometimes also just referred to as Jón Glover, meaning the Iron Gauntlet. One section of Yudvagining even mentions that in order for Thor to be able to wield his mighty hammer, Mjölnir, he needs to be wearing his iron gloves. Some say that the gauntlets were needed to catch the hammer, as when it returned after being thrown, it did so with as much force as that which it was thrown with. The excerpt goes as follows. It describes all three items, Mjölnir, Jóngreipir, and his belt, which we'll get to in a minute. He possesses three valuable treasures. One of them is the hammer Mjölnir, which the frost giants and mountain giants well know when it is raised. And this is not to be wondered at, for with it he has split many a skull of their fathers or friends. The second treasure that he possesses is Meginjord, the belt of strength, and when he girds himself with it, his strength is doubled. His third treasure is that which is of so great value, is his iron gloves, and these he cannot do without when he lays hold of the hammer's shaft. Meginjurth is the name given to Thor's belt, which doubles his strength when he puts it on. However, it's unclear whether he needs the belt to wield Mjölnir, or if he only needs his iron gauntlets to throw the hammer properly. The name Meginjurth literally means power belt or strength belt. In the 10th century Icelandic poem, Thorsdropa, by Eilir Fyrgodrunarsson, Thor's mighty belt is described. The user of the strength belt, Thor, saw the hard-grown shoulders of the sloping land fall around him. The man could not find a useful solution for himself. The diminisher of the children of Thor said that his strength 
would grow to the neck of the roof of the earth, unless the rushing blood of Mole receded. Here the poem tells of the great, unnatural strength that was bestowed upon Thor whenever he put on his belt. Those were today's myths and stories about Thor's three mighty and magical items. His hammer, Mjölnir, his belt, Megenjöth, and his iron gauntlets, which he needs to wield the hammer, Jóngreipir. I hope you enjoyed it. But for now, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! I'd like to take a moment to say a big thank you to the members of the channel as well as my patrons on Patreon for supporting my work. Folklore and fairy tales play such a big part in my life and I love being able to share them here with you. If you're interested in finding out more about channel membership, you can find all the information here or in the link in the video description. Or you can head over to my Patreon page. You can find the link in the description of this video or on my YouTube homepage. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to the members of the channel and my patrons for your support. But for now, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.